This is what the future holds and we can be sure of that. Whether it's curving the display to the bottom to reduce that bezel or curving the display to the sides to create a seamless experience or even notches, punch holes and pop-up cameras, every one of these innovations, they've been aimed towards making something like this, not just fiction, but reality. Continuing with that trend, we now have the first invisible selfie camera on a smartphone that you can actually buy. I mean, you can't buy it in India as of now, admittedly. But what I'm saying is it's not a proof of concept anymore. This is an actual consumer product. You know how the fingerprint sensor went under the display? This is kind of similar, but with the selfie camera instead. So how is this implementation? Perfect. Sucky. Let's unbox this first and then play peekaboo with it. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and if you do end up finding this video weird or interesting or entertaining or all of the above, you know what to do. Thumbs up, subscribe, all that stuff. Let's now get started. So this is the Axon 25G. I've been experimenting with lighting a lot, so leave a quick comment to let me know if I've been doing a decent job. Now taking the knife, the struggle is real people, especially when you're using a prop knife to cut through the seal. Anyway, we are greeted by the Axon 25G first, but since my vacuum is running in the background and opening it at this point, it would sound something like this. Let's continue on while my wife turns off the Roomba. The white insert here has a SIM tool, warranty card and quick start guide. Here's SAR values. Those are totally not important and here's a card to my video why. Some people drone on and on about SAR values to come across as honest. But the reality is, it's just YouTuber manufactured misleading crap. With that said, let's move on. Next, we have a soft case, a 30 watt travel adapter, a USB Type-C to headphone jack converter, and finally, a Type-C cable. Talking about finally, the Roomba is finally silenced and let's take this opportunity to peel the plastic off the Axon 25G. So this here is where that selfie camera is. Turning on the display so far, I can't really see it. Okay, I actually can. I mean, it's worse on camera than it actually is live. And let us get to that in a second. ZTE currently also throws in this pair of truly wireless earphones with every purchase of an Axon 25G. And that makes sense, right? Think about it. On phones that cost over a lakh, why shouldn't brands be including wireless earphones? I mean, they say cut, they cut out the headphone jack due to space constraints, but why not wireless earphones? But we can't really complain about that now since 2021 seems to be the year where we are going to be losing out on chargers. Okay, en enough beating around the bush. Let's get to the reason why you're here, the reason why I bought this phone, the new innovative hidden camera. So what's actually going on here? The pixels turn off and get transparent when the selfie camera turns on, and that helps create a seamless full screen display without the need for having any mechanical parts. Now remember, each pixel still needs to be powered and we do have some very minute connections going on here. That means the display is more translucent than transparent. As per Linus, something like the LG Transparent TV allows for just about 30% light through and that kind of seems to be the, the case here with the Axon 25G as well. Now the implementation, it definitely looks great. I mean, you can see it, but only when you go looking for it. Watching a video from this distance, you aren't really gonna be noticing it much. To be fair though, you probably aren't noticing the punch holes much on most phones once you get used to them either. Hell, there are millions and millions of people who've grown used to that wide Apple notch. So this is, I mean, not noticing it, getting used to it is not saying much. That said, it is a pretty cool step towards that totally bezel-less future I mentioned at the start of the video. Now, ZT does realize the limitations as well. And funnily enough, most wallpapers included, they are pretty dark up top. This small part of the display, it also happens to uh, appear to be of a lower resolution. Technology doesn't seem to be there yet for pixels to be packed tighter. So you do get this kind of patched over feel, low resolution feel, like you see here, or here, or even here. One thing to remember is that this is pretty noticeable only when you look at the display at an angle. Look at the display head on and with most colors, the camera, the selfie camera, it's pretty invisible. Now in all this excitement, it's easy to forget that the premier function of this is actually as a selfie camera. And how does the Axon 25G fare in that regard? 
very average, I'd say. The hardware doesn't seem bad. We have a 32 megapixel F2 camera here. But my first thought was, damn, they have the Puri mode on by default. But no, that wasn't it. The fact that there is a display over the camera and the first genness of it, if I can say that, uh, means we get this kind of glow. Now, for those who've used Snapseed, this feels like uh, the Axon, you know, it has the glamour glow on at all times. But hey, that's the price to pay for being an early adopter. Now, it's not just the camera that ZTE has stuck under the display. The light sensor, the fingerprint scanner, of course, and even the earpiece, they've all been neatly hidden underneath the display. So what about the rest of the specs? It's not flagship level, but it is still pretty solid. The Snapdragon 765G is running the show here. It's paired with 6 or 8 gigs of RAM and 128 or 256 gigs of onboard storage. Pretty solid premium and range specs. The display is OLED, of course, given all the things that are under it. It can't really be LCD, right? And this is a very large panel, 6.92 inches. The colors aren't exactly what you'd call natural. They are contrasty, quite punchy. Personally, I loved it, but I am someone who actually likes the extra saturation, so your mileage may vary. From a software perspective, we have MeFavor UI here. We are naming aside. It's quite stockish. CT is not tinkered around with a whole bunch of things. There are a few nice to haves like raise and double tap to wake, shake to turn on the flashlight, three finger pinch for screenshots. The user interface is nice and snappy. Nothing much to complain about except the fact that I would have loved to see Android 11 here. The battery capacity is also not as high as you'd expect from a phone this size. It's 40 to 20 milliamp hour, goes zero to 60 in about 30 minutes with the included charger. Now the front and back are glass, but as in typical premium mid-range fashion, the frame is plastic. I love how this back looks though. The way we design is quite different from whatever else we've seen so far. Do keep in mind that this is a large phone and that is large in all caps. It is almost impossible to use one-handed. Now, from a so-called tier one brand, this one feature, this one hidden camera feature, this innovation would have been enough for them to crank the price all the way up to above $1,000. But ZTE haven't done that, they've actually kept the price perfectly reasonable. 450 US dollars for the global variant, and it's even cheaper in China with even third-party sellers selling it for as low as $400. Is the implementation perfect? Not even close. Are there sacrifices being made? Hell yes. But the Axon 25G seems to be a solid mid-range phone, and more importantly, it's a sign of things to come what 2021 and maybe even 2022 have in store for us. And that is what had me and has me most excited here. And oh yeah, before we wrap, I totally forgot about the camera array here. This is a quad camera setup, 64 megapixel f1.8 primary, 8 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide, 2 megapixel macro and depth sensors. The primary seems to be okay. I wasn't blown away by any of the pictures. At the same time, it wasn't bad either. The night mode helped get the most under low light, but man, is it slow. Amongst the slowest night mode implementations I've come across in recent times, the ultra wide is pretty nice, does a decent job, and there is nothing new for me to talk about with the macro or depth sensors. So with that, we get to the end of this special unboxing. I'm not gonna be calling it first in India or anything, cause frankly, I don't care. Uh, but I really hope you do care and hit that thumbs up and subscribe button. And if you are in a oh so generous mood, Turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. And with that, it is time for me to bid you adieu. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.